Hi there, thanks for joining me. In this video, we'll take a look at color management and screen calibration. If you're having trouble getting your printed artwork to look the same as what you see on your screen while painting, you can benefit from learning how to manage color on your computer. Proper management of color can help to ensure that your printed digital artwork will reproduce as accurately as possible without any destructive changes to the image's color or contrast. Let me first say that getting 100% accurate screen to print conversion is not a realistic goal to aim for. This is because color can change quite easily based on a number of factors, such as an individual color perception, hardware and software configurations, and color space translation. First and foremost, an individual's perception of color varies from person to person. Not all people see color the same way. This perception is often further augmented by the color of light in a room as well as the colors within an image or within the surrounding environment. In the same way, computers and printers also see color differently depending on a number of factors. Your computer, monitor, uh, digital painting software, document settings, and printer settings all work together as a team to create and print artwork, but as the information is passed from one device to another, the image's colors may get misinterpreted. This translation almost always causes the color to change, and sometimes the contrast too, so unfortunately, Managing color doesn't really have any sort of universal fix. To manage color properly, you must be aware of all the color translations that happen while painting and printing. So we'll take a look at a couple things here. The first will be color perception. And in this example here, uh, we have us, the artist, and we're looking at a piece of artwork here. And on this piece of artwork, uh, we have a particular color. It's this very specific color that we picked here. All right. So what we want is we want to be able to print um, this same piece of artwork and have our print come out exactly the same color. And that goes for all the colors in the painting. Now it's going to be hard to get it 100% the same as I mentioned before, because you know somewhere along this path this color is going to change multiple times. So you'd be really really lucky if you could actually get it to look identical but if you can get it 99 or 98 or 95 percent of the way there it's good enough no one's really going to be able to tell the difference if this color is shifted one degree if I change this hue here to 79 instead of 78 and I put some color next to it it's still basically the same color and you know really only a computer could tell the difference between that degree of color separation so Color changing is going to happen, and you'll just have to learn to live with it a little bit. You don't want it to change too much, though. You know, we don't want our color to end up printing and then, you know, look like something totally different, like this orange here, so we can totally see the difference in that. So, one thing to note is that the color in your room, um, the color of the light in your room can affect how you see the color. So let's say you're working with an incandescent bulb and that's one of those just regular light bulbs that makes everything look kind of uh, yellow or orange. So if we turn that on and we've got some or orange or yellow light in the room and if we take our color and we go from our computer screen here over to our eyes when we get to this point here and we start getting into this light, you can see the color is going to change because this light is affecting that color. That's what's happening in your room um, if you're using an incandescent bulb. If you're using a fluorescent bulb, it might make everything appear cooler and uh, more blue, and the color might change. If you're using a daylight colored light, there might not be any change at all, or if you're working in daylight, there might not be any change. So. You want to aim for that. You want to get some compact fluorescent bulbs or some light bulbs that are natural daylight colored. They don't have to be really expensive ones, just the ones that say, you know, natural light that are um, neutral. You don't want to really work under incandescent if you can help it. Um, and you also don't really want to work in the dark because that's just bad for your eyes. So make sure you have good lighting and you'll be able to judge color accurately. Um, we'll take a look at some more color perception here. Color can really change a lot based on the colors that are in your artwork. So even your artwork can fool you into seeing color differently, and other people will, might see these colors entirely differently too. So the reason why I'm saying don't stress about this color conversion thing is because in the end, your mind can change colors. Um, whether you print something perfectly or not, 
everyone's going to see it differently and it, under different lighting circumstances it's going to look different and it's always going to change so that's that's the fun thing about color though so we have these two um, complementary colors these are opposite to each other on our color wheel here so um, by being complementary to each other they cancel each other out if we blend them together equally what we're going to do here is we're just going to put some neutrally colored gray dots onto these and we're going to see if we can make this gray appear to change color now the cool thing about mixing gray with really bright colors and using gray is that gray can take on the color of other colors it can, it can kind of be like a, a mirror and reflect a little bit of color um, nothing's really actually reflecting in it your mind is just kind of substituting that gray and adding in some color it's a it's kind of an optical illusion so we'll see that in action here by putting some dots on our canvas now if we look really close if we look at these dots do these dots here look exactly the same color as these dots here because to me in my mind these dots on the yellow side look kind of blue um, like I tinted my gray blue a little bit and these dots over here on the blue side look like they're tinted a little bit yellow if we go to sample these colors we'll sample this gray and we can see it's a value of 117 and no hue and no saturation so there's no color in this gray right now we'll sample this other gray and we'll see if it's a different gray or we'll see if it's the same because it looks different and we can see here that if we sample this gray it's exactly the same so there's some optical illusions that can happen here with color um, you can watch one of my other videos on color theory that'll go into more detail about this kind of stuff but for now I just kinda wanna point out that again there's a lot of things that change color and in the end your head right here is changing the color sometimes so we'll look at another example here this is a little more complicated but along the process here um, if we have our color that we want our artwork to be, let's say it's this specific color here, this yellow, as it moves along through Painter, it might end up in Painter, and Painter might change it a little bit. Painter might make it maybe this color now, and when it comes out of Painter, it might go to your screen, and maybe your screen will make it a little bit brighter. And now you got this color. And then it, when it gets to your eyes, it might end up looking like this color. So your color can change along all these paths. If we go to your printer from Painter with this original yellow color, once we get over here to your printer, your printer might just go ahead and change it to this color. Who knows? Depending on what your settings are. And then you're going to print your flower, maybe on a piece of recycled paper that's tinted a little bit brown, and then it's going to change to this color. And then when it gets to your eyeballs, it might look like that. Um, if we convert to different color spaces, we get different results. We might convert from Adobe RGB, which I'll explain later, and go into here. And this might change our color to maybe something like this. And when it gets to our eyes, it might look like this. So. That color is going to change a lot. It might not be as drastic of a change as what I illustrated here. I'm doing that kind of for, you know, uh, example's sake. But you get the idea. It's going to change at all of these different intervals. So I'll kind of go into that more. Um, your screen is probably the first place that you want to look um, to check for any kind of problems. Uh, what you see on screen isn't necessarily what's going to print out. There's a lot of monitors out there that don't display color accurately. And this is for one of two reasons. The first is improper calibration of the monitor. Every monitor has brightness, contrast, and color settings that you can change. If these settings aren't configured properly, it'll be impossible to make accurate prints of your work. The second cause of inaccurate color is that your monitor may not be built for color accuracy. Some monitors just look darker or lighter because of how they're built. Some screens may even have a color cast or a tint that looks red or blue or green. If that's the case, there's not really anything you can do other than buy a better monitor. Take a look at monitors or HD TVs that are rated highly for accurate color reproduction and brightness. You don't have to buy the newest top-of-the-line monitor, just something that's adequate. 
read reviews if you plan to buy online, or go to a retail store and see it in person to get a feel for how the screen will display color and brightness. Personally, I find that my HDTV shows color fairly, fairly accurately, and it works well for making large paintings. TVs and monitors are really the same technology, but you can often get more bang for your buck by getting a larger HDTV. I use a secondary LED computer monitor to give a second opinion on my artwork and store extra windows and reference images. Now, one thing I want to mention on some of these older monitors, uh, screen angle might matter, and on my smaller uh, monitor that I have here, it's uh, an HP, it's like a 22 inch monitor, it's nothing really fancy. Um, if I'm looking at it straight on, the image might look uh, kind of neutral, but if I tilt it up, upward, like this, uh, the screen, for some reason, looks darker, and the image totally changes. And if I tilt it uh, downward, away from me a little bit, then the image gets lighter and brighter, and it looks totally different, and sometimes my shadow areas look really weird. and So what I do is I have my number two monitor here. This is my second monitor, and then I have my HDTV. And that's my primary monitor. And I just look at the image on both, and I kind of average the results in my mind. If it looks lighter here and darker here, maybe it's going to be somewhere just you know right in the middle between those two. And most of the time it is. So it's good to have a second opinion. Some newer monitors might not have this problem, but yours might, so it's something to watch out for. You'll always want to do a test print or a proof first before making any major printing commitments. It's, all, it's also worth mentioning that even if you only show your work on the internet, you still need to have accurate color on your computer because your image probably won't look the same on someone else's screen as it does on yours. You can ensure that your image doesn't change too drastically if your screen is displaying color accurately. So we'll take a look at some common problems uh, with color here. I have an example here of a finished piece that I made uh, a few years ago and it was kind of a, a tricky piece to print because uh, when I look at it on different screens these black areas are darker or lighter uh, depending on which screen I'm using especially right around here you can see the cat's leg on some screens and then on other screens you can't um, so when I printed it, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that it looked right. I didn't want it to look um, too detailed here. I kind of want it to blend into the shadows and be subtle. And when you view it bigger, you can kind of see more of the contrast in there. Um, but what we have here is we have a correct contrast. This is what I'm going for. And it's you're the one who decides what correct is. No one's going to tell you. I mean, people might have opinions and say, oh, that looks too light or too dark but you're using your artistic judgment here to decide what's too much contrast because in someone else's opinion this washed out effect here could look really cool over here with too light you know um, some other people might like it too dark that, that's up to them but I think that this is too light and this is too dark so I don't like these two bottom results these are no good and we can zoom in a little bit and get a feel for that you can see here there's parts of the leg that I didn't even bother to blend because I didn't think that you'd be able to see them when they're supposed to be that dark. And if we look over here, we can zoom in, we just see black, so it's not an issue. Um, and it's especially not an issue here where it's really, really black. But we start to lose the other paws as well, and then you can't really tell that it's a cat necessarily. So you have to kind of aim for your ideal amount of contrast here. And this is something that you can kind of adjust in Painter under the Effects menu and Tonal Control, Brightness and Contrast. You can play with all these things to kind of change your settings. But it's really, you'll get, you'll get better results doing it in Photoshop. So I recommend if you have Photoshop to use that to do these kinds of edits. Uh, the color might be off as well. And if we look at this example here, Again, this is my perception of what I feel is correct. Uh, so this is kind of my ideal color scheme that I wanted here. And if I were to print it 
and my print came out and it looked like this here, uh, there would be a major issue because my apple would be orange and I don't think I've ever really seen an orange apple. So until they start making them, this print isn't going to work. And if this is how my apple ended up looking on someone else's screen or on their iPhone or their laptop, I would know that my color might be a little bit off or maybe their color is off, you know. Um, you would kind of have to check it from a couple sources to make sure. Uh, your color might come out desaturated like this where it loses all of its vibrance. And again, these two things are, are completely subjective. This shifted color looks cool and if you're going for something more abstract, there's nothing wrong with your apple being orange. There's also nothing wrong with desaturating your apple and making the colors more muted. That looks cool too. But this is what I was going for, so that's why I consider these to be wrong examples. But they're not necessarily wrong, they're just not what I was aiming for. So, to get a good idea of what your color actually is, um, without worrying too much about your monitor, what you should do is create just an initial test print. Um, we'll do a test print to evaluate the limitations of your monitor and gauge its color accuracy. It can be any image you like, but preferably something with correct brightness and a lot of color and contrast. Don't print from home though, even if you do have a good printer. Order a test print from a professional printer like your local Walgreens or something to ensure that proper print settings are being used. Just order a few cheap glossy 4x6 photo prints so that you can compare the prints side by side with the image on your monitor. It's worth mentioning that saving to a JPEG format will likely change your image's color and contrast, but it might be required for printing at Walgreens and other places. So you'll have to expect that the color might change a little bit when you print. Um, that's not the end of the world, but it will give you a good idea. So one thing you're going to have to do after you get your test prints to accurately be able to gauge your color here is you're going to have to calibrate your own perception of color. So you have to be able to perceive color accurately to gauge color on your computer and in print. Uh, keep in mind what I mentioned earlier about color perception being influenced by lighting or environment colors. Once you have your print, um, compare it next to the image on screen. Do it several times in different lighting situations. Uh, do it at night, you know, with a lamp on and then look at it during the day and daylight. Uh, look at it, you know, bring your laptop into a different room if you have a laptop, or look at it on a different screen if you can, you know, email it to somebody and have them look at it on their screen, and just get some different opinions of how it's going to look, um, and compare it to your print. You want to make sure that the print that you're looking at is well lit, um, so make sure there's adequate lighting there. Your screen is much brighter because it's backlit, so this might give the impression that the screen's image is brighter than the printed image. Once you get a feel for how the color looks in each lighting situation, uh, average the results in your mind and make note of any drastic changes in color or contrast. You should now have a good measurement of how much your color differs from printed color. If the change is minimal or hardly noticeable, then you probably don't need to do anything else, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. However, if you're seeing a major change like the image looking too light or too dark or the color being off like these examples here, and the ones before, with it being too light and too dark, then you might be able to benefit from calibrating your monitor. It might just mean that your monitor is showing everything too light when it actually looks like this if you were to print it. So that's kind of what we're trying to figure out here. We're, we're trying to figure out where in this chain uh, here that your color is changing. And when you see where all these little road roadblocks are, if we can smooth some of this out and make it change less, then your color might actually end up going through this whole path and not really um, getting changed too much. So you can calibrate your monitor manually by going into your computer's color man management settings. In Windows, that's in the control panels. And once you're in the control panel, uh, you want to go to color management. This might be a little different on the Mac, but same basic principles. And then we're going to go to the Advanced tab here, and we are going to have some different options that we can set. Uh, before we go any further, um, I would like you to go on to Google and do a search for Adobe CMM, and that is the Adobe Color Management Module. And you want to go to their website, it's a free download. 
Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what it does, um, but basically it will make your artwork look and print much better by increasing the range of colors available on your computer. So download this, install it, and after you've installed the Adobe Color Management module, then we'll want to enable it as our system default here under the Advanced tab in our Color Management profile here. Under Device Profile, select Adobe RGB 1998. By default, it will probably be set to sRGB, one of these ones. This sRGB is just the standard default RGB, and it's, it's a limited color palette. So I don't know if you ever had crayons, but um, they had the smaller packs of crayons that had just a few colors, and there's only so much you could draw. But if you had that really, really big monster pack of crayons with every color, you could do uh, more detailed artwork. So basically what it's doing is it's giving you more colors to choose from. Um, and what that will mean is that also when you convert colors, uh, there might be a chance that they will change less because you have more of a spectrum available to you. The rest of these settings you don't really need to mess with um, other than this calibration setting, which we'll get to in just a second here. Um, We'll go ahead and do that next. So on your monitor, you should have some buttons that will let you change the brightness and the contrast and the color and some other settings. You might have to kind of hunt around for those. Everybody's monitor is different, but you'll want to figure out how to get into those and change them. And then once you figure that out, we'll go ahead and click on Calibrate Display. And we will get this dialog here. Uh, we'll just go ahead and go to Next and you can read through this if you want it's just basically going over what i just said okay so this is showing us what we want here we want good gamma so we want to not really be able to see these dots we want these dots that are very apparent here and here to really just blend into the background so this kind of becomes one solid square with not too much going on in here so we'll go to next and what you're going to do is adjust the slider bar. Now, you want these dots to not be very apparent. You might see a little bit of a fuzzy kind of one here, but you don't want to see any really sharp ones in the middle like this. You can see they really stick out here. And if we go too low, you can see they really stick out there. So we want to go somewhere in the middle. If it's fine how it is already, don't mess with it. And it probably is going to be fine right here in the middle. If it helps, you can blur your eyes. And if you blur your eyes and you don't see any little dots in the middle, then you're fine. And in this case, I don't need to make any settings. It's fine how it is. So I'm just going to go to next. Um, you'll want to be prepared to set your brightness and contrast. So we'll go to next. And this is again showing us what our goal is. We want just a good even brightness. You don't want everything to be too washed out. And you don't want everything to be too dark. You want a good balance of light and dark. Go to next. And uh, we'll follow the example here. So using the controls on your display, set the brightness higher or lower until you can distinguish the shirt from the suit with the X barely visible. So I'm not going to do that on my monitor because my monitor is already set uh, fine how I like it, but you can do it on yours until you achieve these results here. And if you're finding that no matter what you do, you can't get a good uh, brightness and contrast setting, this might be something to think about um, because your monitor might just not really be cut out for displaying uh, images accurately. So you might want to look into getting a new monitor or an HDTV if you can't get the setting to work here. But if you can get something close, that's fine. You can still work with what you have. So contrast is something that's very important. We don't want all of the lights and darks to be too similar because there won't be enough contrast, and we don't want them to be too different because we'll start to lose detail. Things that are close to white will become white, and things that are close to black will become black, and we'll lose certain details like in the background here and in different places. So it's like the setting before. We want kind of a balance in the middle here. So again, follow these examples. Set your contrast setting. Make sure that you're not losing all of these light shadows here that you can barely see. You want to be able to see a lot of these details. And you don't have to stress on this stuff too much. Get it, get it as close as you can. Now the final setting 
we're attempting to neutralize any kind of color cast. So we don't want there to be any kind of tint. And again, if you have a pretty good screen or just a, a pretty decent HD TV, this might already be set fine and you might need you might not need to really worry about this color shift. In this case, my monitor doesn't have any kind of color cast, so I'm not going to touch any of these settings. But if you did find that maybe there was a little bit of tint, um, you can play with these sliders. You know, if my screen was a little too red, I could move this. Or if it's a little too blue, I can move this slider. And I could neutralize those color casts. But I'm just going to leave this alone and click Next. And then we can test. We can see how we were previously calibrated, which I didn't do anything, so it looks the same. We can check our before and we can check our after. And you can uncheck this. Having clear type set is good. It makes your text more readable, but we're not doing a tutorial about that. So let's not worry about that now. We'll go to finish and you should have a pretty well calibrated monitor. Now, we're still gonna have to make a few tweaks because even if you have top of the line equipment and you calibrate your monitor perfectly, there's still a pretty good chance that your uh, print isn't gonna come out exactly like you want it to. So don't expect perfection quite yet. There are devices you can buy that you stick to your screen and it will calibrate your monitor for you. These are only helpful if your screen is capable of displaying color accurately. If your monitor is a piece of junk, uh, there isn't any calibration tool in the world that can fix your color. Calibrate manually first, and if that doesn't help, then consider getting calibration hardware or a new monitor. Um, let's talk about color space. Color space is a way of describing the range and quantity of individual colors that can be displayed on a screen or printed in ink. When you view a color on the computer, it's composed of a mixture of red, green, and blue pixels, also known as RGB. And when you print the same color with ink on paper, it's made of CMYK, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black dots of ink. When color is converted from RGB to CMYK, or vice versa, it can change slightly or even drastically depending on the color. So like in this example here, uh, when we went with our color here and we went outside of this little bubble, which is our Adobe RGB color space. Let me just go to the right layer here. When we go out of this bubble and we go into the CMYK color space, this blue bubble here, we're entering a different color space. So when we get into here, our color at this point might change because we've converted our color space. Now this is happening because the colors in CMYK are made differently than colors that are made in RGB. So when you switch to this color space, it kind of has to guess uh, which color it is. And in that translation process, the color might get changed a little bit. This particular yellow here that can exist in Adobe RGB, it may not exist in CMYK color space. It might not be able to go over here so it has to become the next closest color, which would be this here, for example. You know, these aren't specific colors, but it's giving you an idea of what's happening here when you're going in between color spaces. And it would be the same thing here if we went from CMYK back into Adobe RGB, it might change again, and maybe that color would then become this color. And if we go back again, it might change again to this color and so on and then when we print it it's the same thing it might change again so there are ways to make sure that you're using the same color space at all times for all of your artwork and that you're using a color space that's going to convert well and if we're using the adobe rgb which we installed earlier it's going to give us a larger palette of colors so there's a better chance that if we take this color over here it might exist in the CMYK color space and it might only change a tiny, tiny bit to something that's not noticeably different. If we're working in the limited sRGB color space, uh, which I recommend that you not do because it has a limited color palette. So when we go all the way around to CMYK here, it might change quite drastically because there's fewer colors. It might change to something like that, who knows? And these, these changes can happen, uh, even this drastically. So one thing to note is that 
most display screens like a computer monitor or an iPad or your phone, they use the default sRGB color space by default. The sRGB space, again, has a small range of colors, so it's not the best profile to use. Uh, when you convert an image to JPEG, you might be converting the image's color space to sRGB, even if you started the image in Adobe RGB. So you'll have to watch out for that. Uh, sometimes that'll happen. Uh, we can make sure that we're using the same color space and that we're using the Adobe RGB color profile um, from now on in all of our applications by synchronizing our color profile. Our color profile is embedded within our artwork document. So within this file here, color management riff that I have saved is also saved uh, the color space that I've chosen. So right now I'm using Adobe RGB. Um, Photoshop and Painter might attempt to auto convert your color profiles when you open a file. And they might try to convert it to a different type. From now on, we just want to make sure that if we're doing digital painting that we use this Adobe RGB. Uh, if you were going to do something like graphic design kind of stuff for print, then you would probably want to be using CMYK. You can still print from RGB and sRGB, that's fine, but the color might change a little bit. So if you're doing mostly print only stuff for magazines and ads and logos, probably just want to start in CMYK. That way when you pick these colors, they're not going to change. They're just going to print out more or less like that. However, painting in Adobe RGB for your artwork is going to give you better looking artwork, even if it does change a little bit. So what we want to do to change our color space and to set it as a default, we want to go to Canvas in Corel Painter and go to Color Management Settings. And we get some options. Like we changed earlier in our Color Management Settings in Windows, we also want to make sure that our default RGB profile is now always Adobe RGB. You want to set this in Photoshop also. It's again under Color Management Settings. Um, you'll have to watch out. When you open a file, it might ask you if you want to convert the profile or keep the profile. Just Whatever it asks you, make sure that you're either converting to Adobe RGB or CMYK intentionally um, and don't just let things convert automatically. But if you're doing a digital painting, it's fine to use Adobe RGB. So that should just be our default for everything. So we've got that set. So now every time we make a new painting, it'll be set to Adobe RGB. If you have a painting that's not Adobe RGB and you want to convert it, uh, you'll want to go to Convert to Profile and you can choose the new color profile. So this might say sRGB for the existing, and if you wanted to convert it to Adobe RGB, you would just select Adobe RGB here, and then you can convert it. Make sure that you don't flatten your image if you have layers. Uncheck that. Otherwise, it's going to flatten your image, and you don't want that to happen. And then we go to OK, and it would convert our colors. Now, your colors might change a little bit, so you have to watch out for that. That might might be better just to leave it alone if you've already done a painting. You'll have to figure that out and see. Now that you're aware of color profiles, you have to continue to keep track of which profile you're using and watch out for these conversions. So here's some tips. Uh, when you're painting, use a wide gamut Adobe RGB, as I mentioned before, as your working color space. And, you know, if you need to convert to Adobe RGB, that's fine. Just be careful not to go the other way and convert from Adobe RGB here to sRGB because there might be some loss in color or vibrance. Same thing with CMYK. I mean, you might have to convert to CMYK to print, but you don't really have, there's no benefit in converting from Adobe RGB to sRGB. Uh, CMYK is the color space to use for graphic design and printing, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, some printers also use spot color, which are specific colors that are made from premixed ink. If you've heard the term Pantone swatches, those are premixed colors that you can use as an alternative to making color from CMYK. Spot color would be something you would work with in a vector program like Adobe Illustrator. Images for the web and screen d always display in RGB color because that's the way that the screen works. So even if you're working on a document in CMYK color space, the color that you see coming out of your screen is made of RGB pixels, little red, green, and blue pixels. So if you're showing your work on the web or on any sort of monitor or digital display, you should be primarily concerned about how your image looks in RGB color space. 
that's why we care so much about working with this because it's a digital art. You're probably going to look at it online. Uh, and if you do print it, it's going to look a lot better um, than if you if you convert from sRGB to CMYK. So be mostly concerned about how it looks in RGB because that's how most people are going to see it. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is multiple save files. Let's say you want your work to look good both in print and on screen. You'll need more than one copy of your file. So save one version of your image in RGB color and optimize it for display on your screen. Make it look really good on your screen. Don't worry about how it looks in print. And then save a duplicate file. So you'll have two files now. Save a duplicate of your image in CMYK color and optimize it for print. So do some test prints, get it looking good in print, and then you'll have two files. You'll have your RGB file for the web and you'll have your CMYK file for printing. You may find that different printers reproduce differently and they may require you to make adjustments to the contrast or brightness anyway. So if necessary, save more than two duplicates and label them accordingly. You might have one that you have saved that prints really well at Walgreens and you might have another that prints really well on your home computer. Make sure those are two independent files and then you'll have one file for each task. So we've got our screen calibrated. Uh, we know what color profiles are and all that jazz. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll prepare an image for test printing. So we'll select an image for a final test print. Use Painter, Photoshop, Picasa or any other image editing program to correctly adjust an image's color or contrast. You could use a piece of your artwork and do kind of what I did here. If you don't have Photoshop and all that and you just want to use Painter, you can go to Effects, Tonal Control, Brightness and Contrast, and these might do the trick. They're not the best settings, but they'll give you some okay results. Play with my contrast and my lighting get it looking how I want and get it looking good on screen you got your screen calibrated here and then do another test print so now we'll be able to compare your calibrated screen with your first initial test print and your new print and all three of those should give you an idea of kind of how your screen is showing you color now and it'll give you an idea of um, whether or not you might need a new screen so after all that it's going to get a little trickier. If your screen's calibrated and you're getting acceptable looking prints from Walgreens or wherever you ordered them from, then that's great. Your color problems are pretty much solved. You don't really have to watch this any further. But let's say you want to print from home and your home printer still doesn't print correctly. This could be because your print settings are somehow changing your color profile or maybe you're out of one of the colors of ink. It could really be a number of things, and I can't really tell you how to fix the problem without being there in person. Uh, it's that technical. So if you don't know a thing about printing and you can't get your printer to work, you'll need to consult your manual or seek help from your manufacturer. Once your printer is printing correctly, you shouldn't have any color issues. If you do have issues, this could be because your printer's not meant for high quality reproduction. You might need a, a better, more uh, professional quality printer. I recommend though just leaving the printing to professional printers and just use a third-party service to make prints. You go through Walgreens or Zazzle or your, your local print shop and just have them do it for you. It's, you know, it's, it doesn't really cost that much to make prints, honestly. Um, but if you do want to print yourself, you'll need a pretty nice printer that's built for printing color accurately. If you're printing from home, I suggest always printing from Photoshop if possible because you'll have many more printing options available, which may solve your printer issues. You'll also be able to make uh, modifications to your image's color and contrast much easier than with Painter. Finally, the last thing we'll talk about is paper and substrates. And we'll go back to this example here with our little print. And I want to look at this example here. This is our, our print that's come out of our printer here, and it has recycled paper, which is tinted a little bit brown. Uh, a substrate is just a fancy word for any kind of material that you can print on, such as canvas, a t-shirt, wood, metal, handmade watercolor paper, anything. Anything you can print on is a substrate. And each of these substrates have different properties and can affect the color of your artwork when printed. For instance, different materials absorb ink in different ways, and they might make your color appear flat. 
if you print on matte paper, it's going to absorb more of the ink so that the color is going to be kind of washed out in a way. And glossy paper is going to make your colors pop more. But it might also obscure the image by reflecting all the stuff that's around it and causing some glare. Some substrates have a tint, like this recycled paper here, and the brownish tint of the paper will also tint all of the colors in your artwork that same color. So if this is our color here, printed onto the paper, even if the ink came out this color, when it mixes with this paper's color, it's going to tint. And um, even basic papers that seem white have different brightness ratings, which can change the look of a printed image. So finally, as I mentioned earlier, getting an image to come out of the printer and look the same as it does on screen side by side is not a realistic expectation. Even if you have the most expensive printer and the most expensive monitor and a third party thing that you stick on your screen and you have someone come out and calibrate it, there's no magic fix all here. You just have to do test prints and make little adjustments. That's why professional printers always do proofs be before doing large batches of prints. So. Try to get everything calibrated, make sure that you're not doing any accidental shifts here. And if your color changes just a little bit, it's not the end of the world. If it's not drastically changing, that's perfectly fine and acceptable in the world of, of printing artwork. And not all of my prints come out exactly like they look on screen, but that also makes them kind of unique as prints. So that could be a good thing. But if it is a really detrimental change and it's totally ruin ruining the way the artwork looks, then you need to solve one of these issues here and go back through this process and figure out where where your color is changing at. So I hope this helped to make some sense of printing. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment on this video and I'll get back to you. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video and share it on YouTube or Facebook, and that'll make it easier for other artists to find this video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.